continue to help with relief efforts. Together, we will build back better. Coming up, election results from across the region. Good evening, everyone, from WIMT Election Headquarters. I'm Steve Hensley. It was a very good night for many Republicans across Kentucky. Let's start with the U.S. Senate race. Senator Rand Paul has been reelected to his third term in office. He fended off a challenge from former State Representative Charles Booker, who also previously ran for Senate in the Democratic primary against Amy McGrath back in 2020. Rand Paul was first elected in 2010. When I return to the Senate as chairman, <laughs> I promise you this, the COVID cover-up will end. Yes. And I promise you this, I will subpoena every last scrap of paper from our friend, Dr. Fauci. Our victory is that people have stood up across Kentucky that had given up. People that once thought that their voice didn't matter are now lifting their voices and organizing and running for office. We are the change and that's the win. From the hood to the holler is about regular people standing. And we have taken that stand. Charles Booker speaking tonight from Louisville. Before that, Senator Rand Paul, who wins easily tonight, speaking from his hometown in Bowling Green. U.S. Representative and Dean of the House, Hal Rogers, easily won, as you just saw, his 22nd term in Congress. Congressman Rogers defeated Connor Hallbleib in the newcomer's quest to become the first Democrat to represent Kentucky's 5th District since 1963. There's the numbers again. Al Rogers easily wins that race. Rogers has represented the 5th District since 1981. We just got a statement from Congressman Rogers just a few minutes ago. We'll make sure to put that on our website. Incumbent Republican Andy Barr faced off against challenger Jeff Young for the 6th District U.S. House seat. Barr is seeking his sixth term in Congress. Challenger Jeff Young has caused some controversy with his statements this election cycle, including praising the leaders of Russia and China. Tonight, Congressman Barr is celebrating victory in Lexington. The reason why the Republican Party is now the majority party in Kentucky is that the Republican Party agenda and our values match the values of the people of Kentucky. Look, I think a two-party system is a good thing. Barr says he is focused on reducing inflation and crime in his next term. Now to a race not only closely watched in eastern Kentucky, but really across the state. Republican Jacob Justice will be the new 94th District Representative in the State House. He defeated Angie Hatton tonight. WYMT's Olivia Calfee is live in Pikeville, and she talked to both candidates. Olivia? Thanks, Steve. I'm here in downtown Pikeville, where Jacob Justice has been celebrating with friends and family after winning the close race against current Representative Angie Hatton. Justice has now taken two of one of the two Democratic seats for the Eastern Kentucky and the House of Representatives. Justice says it has been a long 300 plus days preparing for tonight, but overall he says he is honored and excited to be a voice for the people in the 94th district. The overall feeling would probably be honor to be the representative for the 94th district. It's my home. It's the people I care about and it's just overwhelming right now. Hatton was the incumbent and served as the House Minority Whip. Hatton has been in office tw since 2017. Live in Pikeville, Olivia Kelfi, now back to you. All right, Olivia, thank you very much. Uh, Angie Hatton said in an interview with WYMT tonight, quote, I wish Jacob Justice well because his success will be the success of Eastern Kentucky and I will continue helping Eastern Kentucky every way I can. Uh, worth mentioning, Angie Hatton didn't win her home county of Letcher County, but lost 
uh, in Jacob Justice's home county of Pike and in Harlan County, which is uh, also a part of that district. Well, there was one bright spot for Democrats tonight. Incumbent Ashley Tackett Lafferty held on to the 95th district seat. She faced opposition from Republican Brandon Spencer. You might remember Spencer. He served as a state representative beginning in 2007 before resigning from the post. Tackett Lafferty will continue serving Floyd and part of Pike County for another two-year term. A seat in the state house Democrats hope to pick up will remain red. Rocky Adkins held the 99th district house seat for Democrats for years. However, when he gave the seat up to join the Bashir administration, Republican Richard White snatched it up. The incumbent White held off a challenge by Democrat Kevin Anderson tonight. The seat serves Elliott, Morgan, and Rowan counties. Republican Senator Brandon Smith easily held on to the 30th district Senate seat tonight. He defeated Democrat Sid Allen. Smith and some friends gathered at Rudy's in downtown Hazard tonight. He talked what it, about what it means to represent his district. But I think I've been to every single one of these sites out there. I don't know that there's another official that's done that from day one. Um, have beaten myself up and, and literally exhausted myself uh, to make sure that those people that feel like nobody's listening to them, or you'll say they haven't seen anybody, but Brandon Smith came here. So I do want people to know that somebody does know you're out there and somebody is helping you. And tonight's vote was a group of people that understood that. I believe he was may have been referring to areas hit hard by the flooding. Of course, his district was hit very hard. Smith won, first won the 30th District Senate seat back in 2008. He previously served in the State House from 2001 to 2008. Two Republican-pushed constitutional amendments appear to have failed to pass tonight. Amendment 1 would have provided more power to the Kentucky General Assembly by allowing legislators to call themselves into a special session and potentially extend regular sessions to end later in the year. Again, it looks like that's going down to defeat, although fairly close. Now, Amendment 2 was talked about a lot more. It would have altered the Kentucky Constitution to explicitly state there is no right to an abortion in the Commonwealth. The no's win on that count as of now, 53 to 47%. More election results from across the mountains in just a second, but first a check of the forecast real quick. There's not been much to talk about through the nighttime hours. One thing we haven't have to worry about are the numbers on the weather map because they've been fairly consistent through the night. But dropping a look outside our front door right now, WYMT, 52 degrees out front. Parking lot empty and it's getting chilly out there. There's a look from Buffalo Mount at some of the transmitter towers up there. 52 the reading there as well and all is quiet at the moment. Low to mid 40s in some spots, but many of us remain in low to mid 50s at this hour. We continue to drop after warm temperatures, especially in the southern part of the region today. Got up near 70 degrees around the eastern third of the country. We're kind of stuck between two systems. A weather front off to our west and a tropical storm well off to our south and east across the Atlantic Ocean. We'll talk a little bit more about that and its effect on our weather in a little bit. But for tonight, down into the 40s, mostly clear and calm wind all throughout the region. Steve, I'll have details on when we could see a return to some late winter weather, at least the late winter feel, coming up in a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. I want to mention briefly here, I know a lot of you have been looking for Breathitt County election results. That's one of the late counties we got in. We just got the results moments ago and we're putting those in. A couple of races I'll mention. Ju uh, Jeff Noble, the incumbent, has won uh, judge executive over former judge executive Harvey Jason Richardson, a fairly close race, 1880 to 1726. And Laura Thomas, the incumbent mayor, has defeated Rose Wolf, a former mayor, uh, for mayor of Jackson, another fairly close race, 297 to 255. Again, we're putting those results in now, one of the last ones to come in tonight. You can find all the results. It's just impossible for us to mention all of the local results here on the air tonight, but you can find all of them on WYMT.com and the WYMT uh, News app. We have them divided by counties. We also have a special section for all the district and circuit judge races tonight. We're still waiting, I believe, on a few of those, but uh, we have all those on our website, you, so you can go there and check those out. The showdown for the mayor of London has come to a close. WYMT's Keaton Hall is there with the latest. 
One of the more hotly contested races in all of eastern Kentucky has finally been settled. With more than 56% of the vote, Randall Weddle has been elected to be the next mayor of London, beating out rival Judd Weaver. Weddle says he's excited for what the future holds for the city. Just the mission of hope and tonight, the, all the circles that we put together, the community now has that. The, the sea, the people here, the, the, all the people that's called, text, it's all coming together. So we're excited for the future of London. Weddle says his initial goal as mayor is to help improve the lives of children and the elderly. In London, Keaton Hall, WIMT Mountain News. And Weddle is set to serve as mayor of London for four years. The Prestonsburg mayoral race also went to the incumbent this evening. Les Stapleton secured his third term as mayor of the city of Prestonsburg and says things are just getting started. During his second term, he says COVID slowed the process for many projects in the city, but he's eager to get back to work and push his town and the entire region forward. Unfortunately, it takes so long to do some of this stuff. And, and then COVID just, you know, that's like dragging an anchor. But now we're moving, we're growing. The city of Pressburg, the county of Florida, and this region as a whole is going to grow quickly. Stapleton added that he is thankful to live and serve his town and wanted to thank the community for their trust. We can also tell you uh, Paintsville Mayor Bill Mike Runyon also won re-election tonight. Now, a different story down in Middlesboro where voters ousted Mayor Rick Nelson. He was defeated by City Councilman Boone Bowling. Nelson is a former educator that served as state representative for several years before giving up that seat in 2018. Bowling is a young face but well known in Middlesboro. He graduated from Middlesboro High School, has been involved with athletics there, and is currently an insurance representative and financial services rep for Transamerica. History was made tonight in the Whitesburg mayor's race. Tiffany Kraft became the first woman to be elected outright mayor of Whitesburg. Now Kraft, you might remember, was appointed mayor after her late husband and previous mayor James Wiley Kraft died. Kraft says following his footsteps is a dream come true. I'm in his footsteps and it's just it's it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful and I am it's it's an it's a fabulous honor. An emotional Tiffany Kraft tonight knows what she's been dealing with lately with the flood too. Uh, well, in the Floyd County Judge Executive's race, incumbent Robbie Williams has secured his second term. Williams adds that his first term as Judge Executive was more of a discovery process, and he has started many projects, even through challenges such as the pandemic, natural disasters, and the Allen shooting. Williams says he and his office have found a way to be successful and wants to push the county even further into the future. I, I, I really hope that this term is you know, smooth sailing, that we can get in there and, and take, you know, take this thing to the next level and really, really uh, put our county on the map. Williams adds that he would like to thank those who trust his leadership as well as his friends and family who've been with him every step of the way. A rubber match in the race for Somerset Mayor. This one pitted incumbent Alan Keck against former Somerset Mayor Eddie Girdler. Keck and Girdler split the previous two election cycles Girdler winning the first bout in 2014 and Keck winning the rematch and title of mayor in 2018. And Keck wins again tonight. One of Knott County's most anticipated races has come to an end. Jeff Dobson will continue his role as county judge executive. WYMT's Alyssa Williams has more. Vote totals were rolling in later than anticipated for Knott County, but ultimately the current Knott County judge executive, Jeff Dobson, will carry out another term. Well, uh, it's, it's a big weight off my shoulders. Uh, you know, I think we've made a lot of progress over these past four years, and I was looking forward to continuing that progress. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of future plans, and we want to continue the county to move forward. Jeff Dobson beat Heinemann Mayor Tracy Neese, who will hand over the role of mayor to Trish Hall at the end of his term. You know, we felt really good about it, but you're still unsure. So uh, once those totals started coming out, and, you know, we was picking up uh, victories from each uh, uh, polling place uh, it just it felt great you know this kept coming in and we kept winning and still ahead and kept gaining ground and uh, 
It's, it's just an awesome feeling. Dobson says he feels grateful for the opportunity to represent Knott County and has big plans for the future. The big thing we're dealing with right now is the flood disaster that we've been dealing with and uh, you know it's a priority you know we want to work to continue to get people back on their feet get people in housing continue to get people help that uh, they so much need hoping to continue serving Knott County to the best of his abilities in Knott County Alyssa Williams WYMT Mountain News we reached out to Heinemann Mayor Tracy Neese for an interview but he declined to comment Incumbent Republican Letcher County Judge Executive Terry Adams defeated Democratic challenger and former Supreme Court Justice Sam Wright in one of the tighter races in that county. At one point, Adams was leading by just 12 votes before pulling away some in the end. Both Adams and Wright were thankful for their supporters. I, I actually didn't have a chance to campaign much at all, and I felt more of a need to, to help our folks here in Eastern Kentucky. The county has always been wonderful to me and I do greatly appreciate it. I was running to try to do what I could to help the county and I will continue to do anything I can any way I can volunteer or help with any of this. This will be Terry Adams' second term as judge executive. A historic race in Martin County finally has a winner. At least five riding candidates were battling out for Martin County judge executive, but only one could come away victorious. That winner is Lon Lafferty. WIMT's John Lowe has more from Inez. History has been made here in Martin County. For the first time in the Commonwealth, a judge executive has been elected by write-in vote. And the winner is no stranger to the job. Current interim judge executive Lon Lafferty won the race with nearly 60% of the vote, beating out Marlena Sloan and Jimmy Kerr, among others. This is his second stint as Martin County judge executive. He was also elected back in 1998 and served a four-year term. His experience was one of the focal points of his campaign. And just after ascending to the job, 11 days ago by governor's appointment, he says he hopes to bring some stability to the office. Well, I hope so. I'll, I'll make the, the, I am the fifth judge in the last five years, and, and if I had lost tonight, it would have been six judges in the last five years. So absolutely, we have to have stability, and again, to work on those major problems of infrastructure, and so that we can create an environment to bring jobs to this area. Now, he also told me that he wanted to thank all of his opponents. They ran a very clean, issue-oriented campaign on all sides, but the race is now over and there is a tremendous amount of work ahead. It's time to get to work. In Martin County, John Lowe, WYMT Mountain News. All right, John, thanks. Lafferty succeeds Colby Kirk. Kirk announced his resignation from the position last month to take a new job as the president and CEO for One East Kentucky. Some history tonight in the city of Hyden in Leslie County. Voters decided the city will now be a wet town. 58 people voted yes to the measure, 50 voted no. This means alcohol sales will be legal in the city. Leslie County was one of only 10 dry counties left in the state. Coming up, the sheriff will not change in Floyd County. We'll hear from him. And incumbent Mickey Steins will also serve another term in Letcher County. More on several sheriff's races and more as election night continues. Lots of checking the forecast. It looks like it's getting chillier in the next, into the end of the week. The details on that in a few.